Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, my third secondary students, for the second semester of the rules, your uh, English grammar today and vocabulary for your book, The Traveler 6. So today, as you can see, we have Unit 3, and we start with the Unit 3 with vocabulary and grammar. So, what we will learn today? Today, we will learn 1. To use prepositions with adjectives correctly. 2. To practice expression with come. 3. To apply the reported speech correctly. So for number one, we're going to practice how we use prepositions with some adjectives like aware of. He was aware of, uh, you know, the circumstances. This is an example too. We're going to practice using some expressions with come. There are some expressions and idioms actually come with the verb come. So we're going to use them and see how their meanings are going to change. Three. We're going to remember how we apply the, you know, reported speech with some introductory verbs like admit, you know, agreed, and so on. So, let's get started. So, first we're going to talk about adjectives and propositions. You know, we got a bunch of propositions here like in, on, by, at, over, with, of, uh, under, for, and from. These are all propositions and also we got too many um, adjectives like exciting charming handsome uh, funny uh, you know uh, green gold uh, good bad old and so on so let's start with the adjectives and prepositions I just give you an example at the introduction about uh, an adjective with a proposition so when they come together actually the meaning changes a little bit so if you have the proposition of and with and about, see how the meaning is different whenever we, we, we move with the sentence. So, I am ashamed of myself for spending so much money on a suit. So, you're saying that you are ashamed. Ashamed is an adjective and it's in green. And the proposition is in red. So, ashamed of. We don't say ashamed in, ashamed by, ashamed to. No. Ashamed of something. Okay, so I'm ashamed of myself for spending so much money on a suit. And this one means here that you really regret this and you really blame yourself about buying a suit, which is very expensive too. Now with the preposition with, are you angry with me for some reason? You haven't spoken to me all day. So we got angry, which is an adjective. And we have the proposition with okay so we say are you angry with me and that is a question it means are you angry uh, with what I did so angry with always angry with and now for the proposition about I'm really nervous nervous is an adjective and takes the proposition about so I'm nervous about my interview tomorrow I'm nervous about my interview tomorrow it means I'm a little bit uh, you know uh, thinking about it or I am a little bit worried about my interview tomorrow. Remember, we do a lot of mistakes when we use adjectives and prepositions in English. Why? Because we translate them directly. One of the things that we really suffer from is how we use adjectives and prepositions in English the way native speakers use them. It, for example, you know, uh, we as language to learners, we always say good in. Uh, we come uh, in Saturday. That is Arabic. You have to pay. You have to pay attention. We say good at something. I am good at football. I will come on Sunday. So, if we move on, we know that we use the verb come too much. Okay. So we got some expressions. They come together with the verb come, and they mean something a little bit different. So for this, since our lesson is still vocabulary one. It is later, or it later came to light that she had cheated in her math test. So, um, as a student, she tried to uh, cheat, though they made some kind of you know investigation, and then finally came to light. It means like finally it was proved. So, come to light in this text, it means uh, like the truth showed up. So, came to light. Two, this torch will come in handy when we go camping 
okay? So to come in handy, which is a little bit, you know, the meaning is exactly the same, in handy, the way you see it in uh, uh, the photo here, we got photos like come in handy when we go camping, it means we use it and it will be, you know, uh, right, you know, reachable into our hands. Three, the new an anti-smoking law is to come into effect next January. It means to be applied, okay, or it is going to be followed. So come to light, come in handy, come into effect. More vocabulary now. We use that, you know, the some expressions and some words come into or with the verb come and they change the meaning. Also, we have idioms or proverbs such as, you know, people always say a penny for your thoughts, a penny for your thoughts. So it means it doesn't mean a penny and put it in your head so you can, you know, put some coin in your head. And then when you put a coin in your head, your head will start to work or function in a better way. Just like, you know, a coin machine where you want to buy some, you know, uh, fizzy drink or some water. It's not like this. So you don't take it verbatim. It is a penny for uh, your thought. It means just you're asking or a way of asking what someone is thinking about something. So you say, just give me a penny of your thoughts. Let's take an example here. One, you're very quiet. A penny for your thoughts. It means tell me something. What are you thinking about? All right. So you're not going to, you know, give a penny and put him in his brain or he's going to take a penny from his brain and put it in, in your brain. So you know what he's thinking about. Two, don't be frightened, Sally. The story your brother told you was just make believe. So to make believe story, it means just it's not a true story. OK, it's not a true story. Three, you have interrupted my train of thoughts with all that noise so you got it's not a train actually like it is drawn here it's just a funny photo it's just like you have you know broken my chain of thoughts because somebody is just trying to connect and analyze things so it's not a really a train that is you know blowing whistles or smoke it's just a train or a chain of thoughts so Every language has a set of idioms you have to pay attention for. And actually, they are so hard to translate sometimes. Now, let's do some evaluation and see what we've done, what, what we've done so far. So that is the good question you always do. So choose the correct compilation for the following sentences. So we have in blue three possible propositions. We got about, of, with here. And for two, we got about, of, with also. And here we got about, of, with. So number one, Omer is very conscious about, of, with the scar he has on his face. Two, Fatten is very popular about her classmates, of her classmates, or with her classmates. Three, are you serious? about moving to or of moving to or with moving to New Zealand. So of course for number one, this is an adjective, but which adverb it takes. So we say Omar is very conscious of the scar or the wound on his face. Number two, Fatin is very popular with her classmates. And number three, are you serious about moving to New Zealand? Now let's move to grammar a little bit and talk about reported speech in some statements. Uh, statements. So you got here a photo that telling a boy with a girl they were on a Friday night. So you remember when you hear some somebody saying something. So you say, I'll call you tomorrow. So the boy said to the girl, I will call you tomorrow. And that was on Friday night. So the girl here, which is the same girl here, she called her sister or her friend and she just you know, reported what the boy said to her on Friday. And now the following Tuesday, she said to her friend, he said that he would call me the next day. So if this is present, we change it into the past and we put he said all the time. Now we know this and we change tomorrow to the next day. Of course, you know this. Now let's remember some statements with reported speech. So if you start with, you know, a, a sentence that is simple present, I talk to Mina. This is simple present. So if it's simple present, okay, step one, you always write, he said or she said, whatever, say, he said that, okay, he said that. You just copy paste this. He talked to Mina. So talk, simple present, we change it into simple past. 
Okay. Two, I wrote the homework. So you always look for the verb in read. This is simple past verb. So how do we change it? First of all, we always say, he said that. Okay. He said that he had written. So we change the simple past into past perfect. I wrote the homework. He said that he had written the homework. Three, what if the sentence was present continuous or present progressive? I am reading a book. Always, he said that, that he was reading a book. So the present progressive becomes past progressive. So again, very easy. Simple past, uh, sorry, simple present. You just change it into simple past and simple past into past perfect and present progressive into past progressive. And always start, he said that or she said that. Another example, what if the sentence was past perfect or present perfect? Let's see that. So the boys have visited Paris. Always, he said that. The boys had visited Paris. So if you have present perfect and the sentence is present perfect, we always look at the verb to determine the tense. So this is have visited or has visited. Oh, this is present perfect. So we change it into past perfect. Okay. Two, or four, sorry, four, five, we may be late. Now, may is a modal verb or a helping verb. We consider it like a simple present tense. So we may be late. Always, he said that. They might be late. So what is the past of may, might? Good. So now look at this. This is very strange. What if the sentence has also a modal verb, but it's must? So when you say in a sentence, the boys must stay at home, and that is a strict command, and this is simple present, and there is actually no past for must. Be careful, this is a bomb in the test. So we say, okay, we change must in a very different way. Always we start with, he said that, the boys had to stay at home. So we use had to. Why? Because must does not have, you know, verb to or what we call simple past or past perfect. Or past participle now let's talk about a you know special uh, introductory verbs which are really a special case in the uh, reported speech so these what we call introductory verbs what do they do let's see now we use these verbs to report the speaker's message rather than his or her exact words so we, we actually we don't care about you know how we change from uh, you know, how we report the sentences, but we really rephrase them in a different way. So you are trying to stress on, you know, the speaker's message. For example, these introductory verbs always take verb to infinitive. For example, we have verbs like agree, demand, offer, promise, refuse. So I'm sure you are a little bit tired of using he said that, she said that, we said that, said, 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 okay? So you are really trying to lay some kind of emphasis of what is said. No, here we use different verbs. We don't always say he said, we said he agreed, he demanded, he offered, he promised, he refused. And this is what you convey the message of the speaker. For example, yes, I will come with you. So you're not going to say he said that he would come with me. He agreed. He said yes. So we say he agreed to come with me. And once you use these introductory verbs like agree, demand, are followed by to come. So he agreed to come. He agreed to go. He agreed to play. He agreed to see. He agreed to watch. Always with to infinitive. It means to with a simple present. More example. So if you use also, advise, allow, ask, command, encourage, want. Any of these verbs. Let's take an example here of this. You heard somebody saying something. You should take a coat. And that is like an advice. It's called outside. You have to take a coat. So you report it like this. He advised me to take a coat. So we used advice because the meaning here is about advice. You should take the medicine. He advised me to take the medicine. More examples. Now with verbs, they also come with ing form. Accuse somebody of something, apologize for somebody, or uh, admit, you know, to, to something to do or doing something. Complain to somebody about something, deny, insist on, and suggest. Here's an example of 
These verbs are followed by an ing. So you broke the vase. But I didn't break the vase. But this guy is accusing me. So we say, he accused me of breaking the vase. I didn't break it. So he's accusing me of breaking. So once you see accuse, apologize, admit, complain, deny, insist, suggest, always use. We don't say he accused me to break the vase. He accused me of breaking the vase. More, we got too many. All right. Now, sometimes also these verbs come with that and a close, the rest of the sentence. For example, verbs like agree, claim, complain, deny, explain, inform somebody about something or prom promise somebody about something else. We say this example. Yes, it means he agreed. Okay. Yes, that is a beautiful hat. So we say, if you see yes, it means he agreed that it was a beautiful hat. So we changed, we kept this close and we added that and that is already here. So we said he agreed because it's yes. All right. That we just move that here. It is a beautiful hat. No, it was. So we just change is into was or are into where. Let's remember what we did in practice. Now you get three sentences and we started the sentences for you, but you have to rewrite them again. So rewrite the following sentences in reported speech and take him into reported speech or change him into reported speech. For example, one, Steve, I really regret shouting at you yesterday, said Alan. Who said this? Alan. Okay. How are you going to report this? Mm, we have the verb regret. That's an interrogative verb. So how can I do it? Let's see. Alan apologized for what? For shouting at Steve. You remember? After verbs like regret, we can use uh, ing form. So Alan apologized. Also for the verb apologize for shouting at Steve the previous day. So you change yesterday into the previous day or the day before. Let's take number two. Please, so you're pleasing. Gareth, drive me home. Who said this? Lee, Lee said this. So Lee asked, because he's asking to go home. So Lee asked who? Lee asked Gareth to drive him home. Okay, so after asked, you got infinitive, to drive him home. Three, you didn't see that. I, went, I want to tell you that I broke the window in the schoolyard, said Paul. I want to tell you that I broke the window in the schoolyard. So Paul admitted, see the verb admitted, it's an introductory verb. He's saying the truth. So Paul admitted to breaking the window in the schoolyard. So what we have learned today we get some adjectives with propositions like good at, aware of, uh, you know, ashamed of, and so on. And we got expressions with come like, you know, come in handy, come into effect. And also we got some idioms like a penny for my thoughts or a train of my thoughts. And also we got some reported speech with introductory verbs and how they change. And here are the uh, references and resources for you if you'd like to check in for more extra activity and for more lessons and information, you can, uh, you know, visit our website, ain.egu.com and follow us on Twitter for more information at ain underscore uh, edu. And for any communication updates and news or any technical support, please call us on this number. And thank you for watching this until I see you again. Have a good day and assalamu alaikum.